bright duty every student matters welcome to another lecture and in today's lecture we are going to continue with our play the bishop candlesticks in the last part of this lecture we had started with the play we discussed about the convict about person about mary and the bishop himself we discussed that the bishop was not at home and person and mary were discussing with each other about his whereabouts on asking again and again mary finally told person that bishop had gone to meet her mother who was not keeping well this made person very angry because the weather was you know it was not a very good weather that day it was very cold and being a good sister she did not want her brother to be exposed to any sort of a problem now the major uh, you know problem arose when mary told person that the salt cellars the silver salt cellars have been sold by the bishop because he needed money to help megrengo this made person all the more angry she loved those all sellers and she started crying she cursed meg rengo she said that she was only pretending to be bedridden she was only acting that she was not well uh, but the real reason is that she was too lazy uh, to do any work so she was very upset with bishop's act and in that duration entered bishop the moment the bishop entered mary uh, was about to help him but obviously she felt guilty because she was the one who had sold those salt cellars person helped him take on a take off his uh, coat person was obviously you know she was not looking very good so the bishop asked her the reason why she had been crying bishop told mary that her mother was better now and he told her to go back home but very quietly so that her mother does not wake up one of the kindest things that the bishop did to mary was by giving her his own comforter because it was very very cold outside so mary exited she went towards her home and the bishop and person was left were left alone and we'll read now what discussion what conversation they had there after so let us start reading person says brother i have no patience with you there sit down and take your soup it has been waiting ever so long and if it is spoiled it serves you by the person was obviously very annoyed she was very angry because the bishop had sold her favorite soul sellers so she said that brother i have no patience with you i have no patience with you means that i cannot take more of your kindness the kind of attitude that you have towards people i cannot take that any more it is actually leaving me very irritated now there sit down and take your soup it has been waiting ever so long she ordered him to sit and to have the soup she said that it has been waiting ever so long that i had prepared this soup long time back and it has been waiting for you for a very long time and if it is spoiled it serves you right so since she was angry she even said that if by chance the soup is spoiled it does not taste good then that is going to be a right thing for you that will be a punishment because you were out of the house so late and that too in such a cold weather bishop says it smells delicious that the smell the aroma of the soup is he wonderful i can feel it is a very tasty soup person says i am sure mary's mother is not so ill that she need have stayed out on such a night as this i believe those people pretend to be ill just to have the bishop call on them 
they have no thought of the bishop. So person told the bishop, obviously being angry, she said that I am very sure Mary's mother must not have been so ill that it was so important for you to go and visit her and that too on such a night as this. Meaning that it is such, you know, it is so cold tonight and there was not such an emergency that you had to stay out of the home on such a cold weather. I believe those people pretend to be ill. Pretend is to show, to act. So she says that I feel that the people, they only show that they are ill. They only act that they are ill just to have the bishop call on them. Because they know that if they are going to pretend to be ill, they are going to call you and you will be there by their side without wasting any time. They have no thought of the bishop. She says, but they never think of the bishop. They never think about your comfort, about your happiness, about what will make you, uh, you know, according to the weather, what, they, what is to be done by you and what not should be done by you. So they never consider you, they never think about you, they are always wondering about their own selves. They always say that they are ill, although they are not. So that they can call you. The bishop says, it is kind of them to want to see. So he says that if people want to see me, then that shows their kindness. That shows that they are very nice people. That they are very kind hearted people. Okay? So it is something which is their good. This does not have anything to do with me being good. But this is how the people think I am. Well, for my part, I believe that charity begins at home. So, person says that for my part, I personally believe that charity begins at home. What do we mean by charity begins at home? That if you want to help someone, start by helping people at your home. You know, if you want to do good to somebody, rather than looking for such people outside your house, First, you have to make sure that the people inside your house are happy. That they have everything that they want. And only then you should go and look out for the other needy people. This is what person said. Bishop says, and so you make me this delicious soup. You are very good to me, sister. So, Bishop says that yes, since you believe that we should be first good to people inside our house, that is why you make me this delicious soup. Because you want to be good to me, that is why you are making such tasty soup for me. You are very good to me, sister. He said that you are a wonderful sister. You actually take care of me very well. This is what the Bishop told person. Person says... Good to you? Yes, I should think so. I should like to know where you would be without me to look after you. The dupe of every idol's camp or lying old woman in the parish. She said good to you? Yes, so she accepted it that yes, I am very good to you. She says that I want to think that I am actually very good to you that without me, you would not have been able to do anything. It would have been very difficult for you to take care of yourself without me being around. She says, I should like to know where you would be without me to look after you. She says, if I would not have been there, if I would not have been looking after you so well, then I wonder where you would have been. The dupe of every idol's camp or lying old woman in the parish. Dupe means cheat. Idol means somebody who is not doing any work. Someone who is very useless. Camp means someone who is, you know, basically making you a fool. Okay. And parish is the area outside a church. The open area.
So she says, what does this line mean is that if I would not have been there in your life, then every idle scamp, every useless person, or every old woman who is lying, who is enjoying her life, lying in the area, in the open area of the church would have duped you, would have cheated you. So this is what person said. So she says that if I were not there to look after you, then you would have been easily cheated by all the sorts of people who don't want to do any work, who just want to lie down in the parish and they believe that just if they are going to, you know, cry in front of you and request you, you are always going to be there for their help. Bishop says, if people lie to me, they are poorer, not I. So we can very well see how kind and how beautiful, uh, you know, what a beautiful soul this person was. So Bishop says that if people lie to me, then they are poorer. If somebody is lying to me, then it makes them bad, not I. I am not doing anything wrong. My intentions are always to help the people. But if the other person's intentions are not good, then that is obviously their fault, not mine. Person says, it is ridiculous. You will have nothing left. You give away everything, everything. So, she says that this is ridiculous. I don't like this at all. You know, ridiculous, something which is totally nonsensical, something which is of no use. So she says that if you will continue to help people, then very soon you will have nothing left. There will be nothing with you because you would have foregone everything to help people. You give away everything, everything. So she spoke this word everything twice to emphasize on the fact that she was really, really upset for the bishop had sold her silver soul sellers. That is why she repeated these words twice. And she said that you actually give away everything you have to help the people. Bishop says, My dear, there is so much suffering in the world. And I can do so little, so very little. So Bishop told her sister, you know, told uh, his sister person that the entire world is filled with a lot of suffering. There are so many people who do not have all the things that they need to survive. They are in a lot of pain. They are in a lot of problems. And if I can do even a slight uh, you know, if I can do something that will give them a slightest of happiness, that will give them some sort of satisfaction and, you know, it will fill out some of the gaps that they have in their lives, then nothing better than that. So, he was such a nice person that he was only and only thinking about helping the people of the world and he was ready to do anything and everything for them. Person says, suffering, yes, but you never think of the suffering you cause to those who love you best. The suffering you cause to me. Person says, suffering, yes, but yes, I agree. There are a lot of people who are in pain in the entire world. But you never think of the pain that you give to those people who love you the best, to your well-wishers. You don't realize how much you hurt them who are actually there for you all the time. She says, the suffering you cause to me, you never think about how much pain, how much, you know, it hurts me at times when I see you helping people like this. Bishop, rising, you insisted here, I hurt you. Ah, I remember you had been crying. Was it my fault? I didn't mean to hurt you. I am sorry. Now the bishop, suddenly he got up because if somebody who 
you know imagine a person who is such a kind soul that he or she can never imagine in the dream also to hurt somebody or to give any sort of a pain to anyone and suddenly somebody puts on this blame to you that you are the one who's hurt me so imagine the mindset of that person that person is going to believe that whatever i done it is going to be such a big tension for that person so same was the case with the bishop he suddenly got up from his place he said you sister dear that i am hurting you and then he says ah oh, i remember that when i came back to the house you were crying was it my fault were you crying because of me i didn't mean to hurt you he said that i am really sorry so he apologized to his sister he said i'm really sorry i never meant to hurt you so again just look at this person he does not even know what error what what fault what mistake he has done but he apologized to his sister way in advance person said sorry yes sorry won't mend it hum oh do go on eating your soup before it gets cold so person said sorry yes but your sorry won't mend it won't mend it means whatever loss has happened your sorry is not going to mend that loss nothing can change with your sorry and then she was like that please sit down and have your soup before it gets cold bishop sits he says very well dear but tell me so he insists on knowing the reason why person was crying person says you are like a child i cannot trust you out of my sight no sooner is my back turned than do get that little minx marry to sell the silver soul seller so she says that uh, that you are like a child so person compared the bishop like a child why did she do that because according to her she could not trust him out of his sight just like a little uh, you know a kid or a little baby you cannot let the child go out of your sight because you don't know what problem the child may get himself or herself into similar was the case with the bishop person said that you are like a child and if you are out of my sight if i cannot see you if you are not there in the house i don't know what you are going to do no sooner is my back turned than you get that little minx marry to sell the silver soul sellers minx is somebody who is very clever somebody who is very cunning so she says that as soon as i was not there in the house as soon as you got to know that i am not in the house you told that little cunning mary to sell my silver soul sellers in return of money bishop says ah yes the soul sellers it is a pity you you were proud of them so bishop says oh yes those soul sellers it is a pity pity i feel very sorry for that i really feel very bad for it you were proud of them so he asked a uh, person that you really loved them didn't you person says proud of them why they have been in our family for years she said of course i did love them because these soul sellers have been in our family for many years so there is an attachment which is bound to develop big bishop says yes it is a pity they were beautiful but still dear one can eat salt out of china just as well so bishop again says that yes it is a pity yes i am very very sorry for whatever has happened they were very beautiful but then he said that one can eat salt out of china also china means the bowl ceramic bowls okay so he says that if you need salt then the salt can be obtained by you from the bowls also why do you need a salt seller a salt seller for that purpose 
we can definitely use the salt from the bowl also. Now this made Persim a little irritated and she said, Yes, or meat off the floor I suppose. Oh, it's coming to that. And as for that old wretch, Mayor Gringor, I wonder she had the audacity to send here again. The last time I saw her, I gave her such a talking to that it ought to have had such effect. Person says, yes, of course. Just the way you are saying that we do not need a salt cellar to get the salt, we can take it from a bowl. Similarly, one day you will say that we do not need a plate for eating meat also. We can eat it off the floor, we can put the food on the floor and we can eat the food from the floor also. She says that as for that old wretch, now wretch again it means somebody who is very bad, someone who is very cruel, somebody who is very heartless. So she said that that old and bad lady, Mayor Gringor, I wonder she had the audacity to send here again. Audacity? Courage. She says that I cannot think how did she have the courage to send here again means to take your help again. The last time I saw her, I gave her such a talking to that it ought to have had such effect. Such a talking to that means Person confessed that the last time when she had met Mayor Gringo, she actually scolded her. She told her not to take Bishop's help for everything and she had expected that whatever scolding she had given to Mayor Gringo, that would have had such effect that she is not going to be so shameless of taking the Bishop's help again. Bishop says, yes, I offer to take her in here for a day or two, but she seemed to think it might distress her. Bishop says, yes, that is why when I gave her the offer that if your house is not there with you, then you can come to my house. You can stay there for a couple of days. But Mayor Gringor said no. She said that that might distress you. Distress me, that would make you very sad. You are not going to like it when she would come to the house. Person says distress me. It is going to make me sad. It is going to make me disappointed. Bishop says and the bailiff who is a very just man would not wait longer for the rent. So, so, you see, I had to pay it. He says that the bailiff, the one whose house, uh, you know, who was supposed to take the rent from Mayor Grengo, he is a very just man. Just means somebody who is very fair, somebody who does not know how to cheat with anyone. He or she can always take a very equal, a very balanced decision when it comes to something or somebody. So she says that the bailiff, he said that the bailiff is a very, very fair man and he was not willing to wait any longer for the rent. And so I had to pay the rent. I did not have any other option. Person said you had to pay it. Gesture of comic despair. Despair, disappointment. So she again said, you had to pay it. Okay, so you wish to say that whosoever is going to ask you for money, you are going to pay that person the amount. And there was a gesture. Gesture means to do something, you know. For example, when we have to bid somebody a goodbye, the gesture that we do is to wave our hands. So this is a gesture. Just by waving the hands, the other person can very well make out that you are bidding him or her a goodbye. So when person heard uh, the bishop saying that, you know, since the bailiff was not willing to wait any longer, therefore he was forced to pay off the money, she actually had a lot of disappointment on her face, but she laughed it out. Ki, ha. Fine, what do I do in that? Person says, 
Yes. So, yes, and you see, I had no money. So, I had to dispose of the soul sellers. It was fortunate I had them, wasn't it? Smiling. But I am sorry I have grieved you. Bishop says that, yes, you see, I had to help Mayor Gregor, but I had no money with myself. So, the only option that I was available with was to dispose of. Dispose of? Your disposing of means to give away those soul sellers, to sell off those soul sellers to somebody who needed them. He says, it was fortunate I had them, wasn't it? Fortunate means lucky. But don't you think we are so lucky that we had those soul sellers? Because if those soul sellers would not have been there, then I would not have been able to help me as Rengo. So he started smiling and said, But I am sorry, I have grieved you. Grieved you made somebody upset. So he said that though I am very happy that I was able to help somebody with the help of those soul sellers, but on the other hand, I am feeling very sad and guilty that I have caused a lot of problems and a lot of sadness to you. Person says, oh, go on, go on. You are incorrigible. You sell your candlesticks next. Incorrigible means someone who has no scope for improvement. You cannot do anything about them. Somebody who can never change. So, person says that please continue doing whatever you are doing. Continue to sell off your things. Continue to give away money to the people. You are incorrigible. I cannot do anything about you. I cannot help you at all. One day you will sell your candlestick. So she said that one day you are actually going to sell off these candlesticks because you would feel that this, you know, these candlesticks would also be able to help someone. Bishop was very concerned. The moment person mentioned those candlesticks, there was a lot of concern on his face and he said, no, no, sister. Not my candlesticks, that I will never think of selling off my candlesticks. Bishop says, Oh, the person says, Why not? They would pay someone's rent, I suppose. Now, person had said this in a sarcastic manner. She was making fun of the bishop by saying, That why will you not send your, sell your candlesticks? Maybe these candlesticks will also help someone. Somebody would need the money, you will sell these candlesticks also and you will help that person. The moment she said this, the bishop being such a nice man, he thought that person was actually very serious about it. That she actually meant that the bishop should sell these candlesticks and help somebody with the money. So bishop says, oh you are good sister to think of that. But I don't want to sell them. You see, dear, my mother gave them to me on, on her deathbed, just after you were born. And, and she asked me to keep them in remembrance of her. So I would like to keep them, but perhaps it is a sin to set such store by them. So Bishop said that, oh dear sister, you are so good. You actually have such a beautiful thought in your mind. You actually believe that if I sell these candlesticks, maybe I'm going to be able to help somebody else. But, but, he said, I will never sell my candlesticks. Because he told person that these candlesticks, you know, that were given to me by my mother on her deathbed. So this was the last thing that Bishop's mother gave to him before dying. He says that just after you were born, so after you were born, when the mother was obviously about to die, she gave me these candlesticks and she asked them, to, asked me to keep them in remembrance of her. And the mother told me that I should keep these candlesticks with myself 
always so that they would be her last memory for me. So I would like to keep them, but perhaps it is a sin to set such store by them. To set st such store by them means to have some sort of an attachment with something. Okay, so he said that probably this is a sin. This is not at all a good thing that I am so attached to these candlesticks that I can sell these candlesticks and help somebody, but I am not thinking about it. Maybe you are right. Maybe I am doing something wrong. Person says, brother, brother, you will break my heart. With tears in her voice, there. Don't say anything more. Kiss me and give me your blessing. I am going to bed. So person said that brother, one day you are actually going to break my heart. You know, the way you always talk, the way you help people, the way you never think about yourself but others. You are really going to break my heart someday. So she had tears in her voice means it was very evident from her voice that she was emotional at that time. There, don't say anything more. So she told the bishop that now, okay, don't say anything more. Just kiss me, bless me so that I can go to bed and I can sleep. So they kissed. So the bishop kissed the person and blessed her. Bishop makes the sign of the cross and murmurs a blessing. Person locks cupboard door and goes dry. So, Bishop makes a sign of cross. We all know we've seen this in picture, the kind of cross sign that the Christians make, right? So, he made this sign of cross and he murmured a blessing. Murmuring means to speak very slowly. Person locked the cupboard and she went to the door which was on the right. Don't sit up too long and tire your eyes. Before going for sleep, once again, like an elder sister, although the bishop was elder to the per to person, but we have seen the way person would take care of bishop, it actually seemed that she was basically a motherly figure for the bishop, taking care of him, giving him food, asking him to sleep on time. So she said that don't sit up too long. Please make sure that you are going to sleep on time. Otherwise, you are going to tire your eyes. You know, your eyes will get tired. Bishop says, no dear, good night. So he also says that, yes, yes, don't worry. I am not going to wake up till late. I will sleep on time. And he wished her a so, my dear students, what did we read so far? We read that Mary had exited uh, from the door. She went back to her house. The bishop told Mary that her mother was feeling well. So, Mary left. After Mary left, person expressed her anger for her sister. And she told the bishop that obviously he was like a child and that she had to look after him. She had to guard him. Just like a child. She also said that I cannot trust you. Because the moment I am not around you. You can actually do anything and everything. Now this obviously made the bishop realize. And remember that person had been crying. So he asked her the reason. And then person said that when I was not at home in the afternoon. You sent Mary with those silver salt sellers to sell them. Now, Bishop said that he needed money because he had to help Mary Gringo. She also told the Bishop that last time when I had met Mary Gringo, I actually scolded her because I know that she was taking your help again and again and I thought that she was not going to bother you. But she did. So, person also told the Bishop that if you wish to help somebody, Start with the people at home. Charity begins at home. So, person obviously could not tell the bishop anything. He was such a kind man. He was such a nice man that he had a positive answer for everything. So, at the end, person gave up and she said that I cannot 
take, uh, you know, anything. I cannot say anything about you anymore. I am going off to sleep. Please bless me. And she also, you know, told the bishop to sleep well on time so that he did not tire his eyes.